Hey there, I'm Mike Henry, and this is my Procreate 4.3 demo for the piece I call Hades. So this is obviously a alternate take on Hades from the Disney version of Hercules. I did this sketch of Hades at Sketch Bomb, this female version of Hades, a long time ago. And uh, again, I've been sort of mining old drawings that I wish that I had had time to color, and I thought this would be a perfect one to sort of bring up to a, a more finished quality now. So here we are in the flats process using the turpentine brush and we are going to be separating out the ears and face as like one piece. Then we're going to have the neck, shoulders, top of her chest as another piece. Uh, we'll have her robe, the skull, the embellishments in the robe, those are all be separate. I think the one thing that's kind of a key differentiator of the way that these layers are going to be set up is I also wanted to try and communicate the shape of her head in the fire, in the fire hair. So there's actually a layer that is under the face but on top of the fire that is a skull piece and then that's adjust the opacity of that is adjusted so that I can try and sell the transparency of the fire and so we'll get to that eventually right now I'm just sort of grinding away at uh, at the old flat game and uh, one thing I want to also reference was I didn't really know where I wanted this piece to go when I started it. I mean, I had some key things that I knew were going to be important, like I wanted her color palette to be similar to Hades from the movie. I also knew that I wanted the fire to be kind of a light source. But then the eyes, um, I didn't want them to glow at first, and ultimately they end up glowing just because it looked cooler. And the background starts as being like blue, and uh, like a blue, blue, green, and that because I wanted it to kind of look like some of those scenes that you see from the movie where the backgrounds are just these like cold, sort of damp looking places. Um, but then I decided that I'd rather the illustration just sort of have more punch overall, and since she is basically all blue. Uh, I wanted to have the background contrast that a bit so that she popped out. There's the skull layer, the sort of scalp layer. And there's me just sort of cleaning it up so that it, it makes sense. And I didn't want it to be too tangential with the tip of the ear, which is why you see me pull that skull in just a little bit. The scalp in. I keep saying skull. I mean, technically, it's part of the... Anyways... So now we're doing the eyes, and we're just going to go through the flatting process, so I'm going to shut up, and uh, then I'll come back in when we get to more interesting things.
Okay, so now we have a majority of the flats done. There'll be some additional details that I go back in and add, as well as the background. We'll get some shapes thrown in there to imply what the background is. Uh, but right now we're going to move to the ambient occlusion pass and do these soft shadows. It's with a light and desaturated red. And uh, that's what we're going to do for both the ambient occlusion shadows and the direct light shadows. One other thing too is the fire hair won't get really any kind of rendering um, since we aren't, I don't know, it's really kind of hard to explain, but I mean it's, it's essentially it's like pure light in this illustration and there's really no need to add additional form to that so we're not going to be using shadow layers for that we'll use some of the colors that we've got in the fire to try and better define the fire a little bit um, but that's it's not going to get any type of shadow work so that will just get cleared from the shadow layer and then no no more shadow shall touch it okay so now we're working on the face making sure we're selling the topology of the face. You'll also see me put a lot of shadows uh, in the eyeballs, which eventually when I decide to make the eyes glow, I strip a lot of that out of there. Um, but we'll address that when we get to it. One other thing that's kind of interesting in the flats is you'll see the eyelashes black, but then on the underside of the eye, it's this like really dark red. Um, that's actually kind of really weird. And the only reason I did it is because when I looked up Reference of Hades, that was a part of his design. But I have to say it is fairly strange, and it's kind of a small detail that you probably can't really spot once the illustration is final. But in an effort to just try and make it as close as possible, there it is.
brings an end to the ambient occlusion pass, and now we're going to do the direct light shadows. Uh, you'll also notice as I'm getting, I'm experimenting more with the turpentine brush, I'm finding more opportunities to do sort of like a softer shadow when I'm doing the direct light shadow, and then also capturing the hard cast shadows at the same time. And that's just me sort of trying to play with how I want to communicate form. So usually something that I'm like starting to do more of is I'll use the smudge to soften the direct light shadow when I'm trying to communicate like when I'm trying to turn form basically and then when I am trying to identify where a shadow gets cast I just paint it in straight without any type of extra um, treatment to it and so you'll see that more and more creep up in the turpentine brush pieces that are still coming uh, and you'll see it a little bit in pieces like this as well the ambient occlusion pass is for me at least the trickier pass because you're trying to sort of not communicate too much directional light you're trying to give form to the structure um, or you're trying to represent the structure accurately I should say uh, and you're trying to capture these like deep recesses where the light can't really get to whereas the direct light shadow is just like blah, just like shadow 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 and it's a lot kind of more rewarding because it's where so much impact happens and sometimes I've talked about this in past videos sometimes when you're trying to sell yourself on finishing a piece you have to kind of identify okay if I at least make it to this point then I'll know that I'm like close to where um, I'll start getting excited about something and I think that there are certain painting methods processes that even I have that I do that I, I don't really know where that point is however with this one with this process I know that when I get through the the ambient occlusion pass and I'm starting to lay down the shadow that's like 99% of the time where I win myself over um, and then I just get to have fun from that point on because that's when you start getting into like reflections and bounce light and all those sort of like that you know that last like 10% that means 50% or whatever the phrase is um, and that's uh, that's sort of the really fun exciting part and so if I can get to this stage I can start getting excited about something in the ambient ambient occlusion shadows have been put in and now we've adjusted the way we're going to represent that fire with this sort of flat shape that's been gradiented with this messy brush I don't remember what brush it is just try to find some exciting brush that excites you and use that and then for this bounce light you can see I established okay we'll get it um, darker at the top right and we'll have this purple light sort of coming from the bottom left and that starts me thinking about where this environment is going to go so right now I'm just trying to get this purple laid in, this bounce light, so that then I'm starting to understand 
where will this illustration end up and what are the cool aspects of this illustration. So we're getting some more of this bounce light in and then we're going to move into doing the sort of blush on this character. It's not exactly like we're communicating blood under the skin like we would with just sort of a normal human. Instead we're just going for uh, color variation so that we can bring some interest to the face and blue felt like the right way to go. It gets shifted around a little bit more, see there it ends up more of a purple, but um, the point was to try and bring some color variation in and you know hint at things that like real humans have that, that creates points of interest, uh, but then adapt it for this character. So we're making sure that purple gets reflected, or that purple light coming from the bottom left, purple pink, that it's getting reflected in the all the right ways across all the right surfaces. And I'm starting to play with the what what the light layer is going to be, sort of the um, what's generating the bright light. Right now we know that it's this hair, um, this fire hair, but trying to figure out exactly how that's going to look is more the, the issue at hand. And right there what you can see too is me decreasing the intensity of the eye shadow. So here, what I've done is I've just sampled the blue from the fire, and I'm starting to lay it down so that I can start seeing what that's going to look like. Um, once I get it in and I adjust its opacity around and stuff, I realize that it's not giving me the exact look I'm, I want, so I end up switching it to different layer effects, or different layer blend modes. I end up on overlay, I'm pretty sure, but really the point is less to you know, set light to overlay, which would be like a really robotic bit of feedback to get, or not feedback, a, a robotic tip to teach people. It's more about saying what's the blend mode that's going to get you the look that you're going for. So when you're trying to solve this type of a problem, um, look at reference if you don't already know what you want it to look like, and then try to figure out what all these different tools are um, that will get you there and that's just done through experimentation you're just going through the different modes and being like oh this one works this one doesn't work and then after you've built up a knowledge base of what they all do you can just choose that in the future and so now we've kind of found the the general look we we have our shadow we have our bounce light we have our highlight and now it's going to be about continuing to work all of these elements and try to identify the ways that we can make them as good as they can be you can see I'm having a lot of trouble with how I'm gonna do the reflection on her eyeballs um, they are yellow bright yellow so trying to get them to work in the way that I want them to for this illustration just kind of wasn't working I wanted her eyes to be like it was weird, I was just internally grappling with it. I wanted them to be illuminated, but I didn't want them to be glowing, which is like stupid. So eventually I just give up that internal struggle and I just make them glow and I think it makes the piece a whole lot better. So now I'm just putting a little bounce light on that cheek so that I can bring some of that form out a little bit. and putting some subsurface scattering behind or in her ear because technically her hair is on fire and she's, you know, creating light from her head. So now we're just blocking in a loose background uh, using silhouettes and you'll see me turn things on and off as I refine these and make sure they look good. I just quickly looked at reference of what Hades or what hell or whatever looked like in the movie and just tried to very very loosely represent that with a few shadows and I wanted this background to be this color as I referenced earlier because it helped the character pop a lot more and it just seemed like a cooler image there we duplicated the hair and blurred it so that we could get a glow off of it and um, I even 
uh, duplicated the whole thing and used a mask to have it fade a little bit. So here's where I just say, okay, let's make the eyes glow. I'm, I'm playing with, uh, I shouldn't say this is where I decide to, this is where I'm continuing to mess with it, and this is, the, this is what leads me to thinking, okay, fine, let's just make these glow. last minute adjustments phase of the piece where I'm going through and I'm trying a few things. You can see right there the shadows get a little redder pinker. The lighting, the light blue kind of changed a little bit and then I come in and I say okay let's stop trying to nail this weird reflection on the eye and let's just make these eyes finally glow. I think I even had this image saved out for like two days and I was like what is still bothering me about this and that's basically what it is. So here I am just duplicating it and blurring it and then clearing uh, the area where it overlaps and then setting it to a layer effect that makes sense and giving it that glow. So I can finally just say find the glow there and make myself happy. And so here we are turning all the last layers on and taking a look at how it looks and that's the final piece. If anything about this seemed unclear feel free to ask questions down below. I, I always like hearing specifically what people um, are getting out of this or not getting out of it. And um, But otherwise, I mean, that is the process for how this was created. This take on the character was really fun to do, um, so I hope you dig it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video or other videos, please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you on the next one. And don't forget, I'm going to be at Trojan Horse Was a Unicorn this year, or THU if you don't like saying that entire sentence. So if you're going to be there, hit me up and let's chat. And if you're looking for me on the internet, these are all of the places you can find me. And if you don't know what all these little icons are, it's YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, ArtStation, Facebook, DeviantArt, Big Cartel, and Teespring.